There are two kinds of law on the earth, as I've said. One is called civil law, which is the law of the land. And one is called maritime admiralty, which is called the law of water. Uh, the maritime admiralty is banking law. And the law on the maritime admiralty says that you, because you came out of your mother's water, are a maritime admiralty product. This is why the ship is sitting in its berth and it's tied to the dock and the captain has to give a certificate of manifest to the port authorities because money is changing hands. This is why when you were born, you have to have a birth certificate. You are a maritime admiralty product. And therefore your birth certificate is signed by your mother and where your mother signed on the birth certificate, get it, you will see, it does not say parent or mother, it says informant. Your mother was informing the, the, the bank that she has just produced another product to be bought and sold. England, the British Crown through international banking owns your physical body and that's the law. And if you could get your original birth certificate back, you would find that on the back of the birth certificate are all the banks around the world. All over the world, banks have used your birth certificate because you are a stock in a maritime admiralty banking scheme where you make money for banks. Consequently, the corporation and government, people who want to control you, they create a second you and that second you that they control, that they created, is all capital letters. Check it out. Anytime you get a bill, get a lawsuit, you get a fine, a ticket, somebody sends you a bill from the Department of Water and Power, check it out on your driver's license, on your social security card, on your insurance card, anything, period, anything having to do with business, your name will always be all capital letters because only all capital letters can be dealt with by banks and government. Anytime you have a name upper or lower case that, that applies to you, I've got no control of you. You sign a contract in which your name is in all capital letters, now I can take it to court. the rain. Turns out, not you. You're actually breaking the law if you try to capture rain falling under your roof and pour it on your flower bed. A prominent Utah car dealer found that out when he tried to do something good for the environment. John Hollenhorst has the surprising story. Rebecca Nelson captures rainwater in a barrel and she pours it on her plants. We can fill up a barrel in one rainstorm, so it seems a waste to let it just fall into the gravel. Car dealer Mark Miller wanted to do pretty much the same thing on a bigger scale. He collects rainwater on the roof of his new building, stores it in a cistern, and hopes to clean cars with it in a new water-efficient car wash. But without a valid water right, state officials say he can't legally divert rainwater. I was surprised. We thought it was our water. We all know that there's some crazy stuff happening out there, eh? I mean. We've got government agents coming up to us, telling us that we're all equal. They make demands upon us that we know we could never make upon them. Where's the equality? On the screen, there's a little baby. That's Elizabeth Annie Lane. She's a little baby, came into my life uh, about four and a half years ago. Two days after the birth of Elizabeth, ministry workers came in, removed her. No investigation, no assessment. Claimed she only had one caregiver. We said, you're wrong. We're a family. We're going to meet you in court. They told us if we tried doing that, they'd see to it. She spent the first five years of her life going from foster home to foster home to foster home. Shut me up in court, cost me my baby. Folks, anyone who knows me, shutting me up even for a moment is a bit of a trick. They cost me my baby. I sat down with their act, Black's Law Dictionary on one side, Bouvier's on the other. I had an old English dictionary. I looked up every single word in there. It took me three days and I finally saw it. Have you ever seen these laser pictures? You see nothing until you focus past it and then a 3D picture pops into your head. 
Have you seen those? This is exactly what I saw when I did my statue deconstruction. I looked through and it, I suddenly saw what they were doing. This is their little trick. You are not obliged to register your children. If you do, it is at that point that you're creating a legal entity or a person. You are associating this person with your offspring. You are abandoning ownership or title to that person. And the government is seizing that under the laws of maritime salvage. It becomes their chattel property. They use it as collateral to float loans or to float bonds for loans. When they come to remove a child, they're not acting on the human being at all. They're removing the legal entity you created and abandoned and they now have title to. That's your person. That is what the government acts upon. A human being and a person are not the same thing. We've been led to believe that they are, but they're not. In Black's Law Dictionary, you'll find a definition of a person, and it says, a human being is not a person because he is a human being, but because rights and duties have been ascribed to him. Specifically, the person is that legal subject or substance of which the rights and duties are attributes. But not all human beings are persons, as was the case in Old England when there were slaves. Right now, the officer's going to take a look at my affidavit of truth. I've stated that I'm not driving, I'm traveling. Um, right there, uh, for my own protection, I'm filming it. Um, I'm wondering what he's going to do. He's reading my affidavit of truth right now. Um, yeah, so I'll get back to you. He's also stated that I'm under obligation to carry a uh, photo ID, which I'm obviously not. That's the officer right there, car 77. So, hopefully, um, yeah. Bye. There we go, car 77. Uh, officer did not state who he was. There's my dad. I have gloves. Here, you want them? Mine? Yeah. There's another police officer showing up. Um, I've already informed the officers of my rights. Uh, this and that. Officer, I just want to let you know I'm activating my fee schedule. It's the middle of winter. I am cold right now, and you're uh, harassing me right now. So my fee schedule will be activated in three minutes. I suggest you contact a superior officer. Read that affidavit of truth. We're reading that right now, sir. We're taking, trying to get I know. I'm just freezing cold. Okay. I'm freezing cold, so. So, summed up, I've been pulled over for, I guess, the cops uh, saw me right there. I'm cold. Here, hold that. I mean, I'm not trying to be a dick, I'm trying to inform you. You're giving us a lot of stuff to review. I don't care enough to build a guy. He has no idea what's going on. Well, look at that. Like the one, at least they didn't have a handcuffed you. I know. That one guy was using it. For the record, I also informed the officer I was operating under protest and duress. Hey, all those documents come back. Hey, perfect. Here you go, Joshua. So. You, you don't have a driver's license, correct? No. And no insurance, correct? Do you have insurance? No. I'm working on that right now, doing it through, um, it's, 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 not, it's not a registered motor vehicle, right? So it's not under you guys' jurisdiction. I'm not trying to cause trouble or nothing, but I am getting insurance on it, but it's through my uh, society that I'm part of. Okay, perfect. So I don't, obviously, like, I only, I only use it to uh, travel around and get my girlfriend home from work and stuff like that, okay. so. Well, once you go on to the highway, need to have insurance. So take care of all the proper avenues that you need to take. And if I make a determination that charges are applicable,